Use cases capture the interactions between a user and a system from a user's perspective. They have what is often called a happy path through the system as the main course. Alternate paths represent exceptions and error handling or less common paths through the same scenario. You can capture use cases in a visual diagram called an activity diagram. However, use cases are typically created in their easiest form as a list of text statements where each step is either a user or a system action. They are used to requirements to facilitate identifying functional requirements of the system. Each step of the use case should also be evaluated to determine what functional requirements are necessary to support that particular step. Missing requirements in systems are often a result of ignoring the alternate paths, so it's really important to look at every step for requirements, including those alternate paths. You may often hear about user stories as a model in Agile projects. User stories are much like use cases in a lighter weight form, more of a paragraph about what happens. They are the same, though, in essence, as to what they allow us to do to get requirements in the system. In this example use case, a sales rep is creating a quote to send to a customer. So in the first step, the sales rep creates a quote, and the system responds by displaying a blank quote with fields based on the selected quote type. When evaluating this use case step for requirements, the second step shows us that we need to capture detailed requirements around what valid quote types there are, and what fields we must capture for each of those quote types. Also, we learned there is a requirement that the system must let the user select the quote type. This would prompt a question for the business as to whether there is a pre-selected default quote type. Also in this example, we can see on step five how there is an alternate path referenced. In the main path, the sales rep accepts the suggested sales discount, but we also need to handle the path in which the sales rep does not want to accept that discount. The alternate path would explain the steps to follow. For example, maybe the sales rep can enter an overriding discount. We then need to capture the requirements for that alternate option, including what kind of control the sales rep has or what approval workflow needs to be followed in this scenario. Use cases or user stories are used in virtually every system we work on because every system really does have user and system interactions. Use cases also provide a fantastic mechanism to organize iterative development methodologies, allowing the business to prioritize at the use case level. Use cases are appropriate on any system that does have these user and system interactions. They are a very simple format for the business to review the requirements. You should absolutely use formal use cases if you suspect you have a lot of alternative scenarios because they aid in the discovery process. For every step in your use case, you should ask, what other options does the user have here? And what could go wrong at this step to help identify those alternative paths? Use cases are also exceptionally useful later in your project because you can use them to create user acceptance criteria. By picking the common data points through your use case paths, those are your test cases. I do not recommend using use cases for system-to-system -system interactions. Process flows are much better at that type of interface. They are not useful in complex branching scenarios either because in those cases you would end up with a lot of if this, do that kind of steps. They're hard to follow. In those cases, supplement your use case with a decision tree for that logic.